Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do more of a developer vlog or DevOps vlog, what I don't even know what I want to call these anymore type of video and kind of talk about where I've been, what I've been up to and projects that I want to do moving forward with this channel. First things first is I mentioned that I started a self-paced bootcamp. I started a bootcamp that is called Coder Foundry and what they are is they are a full stack web development bootcamp. And why I decided to do this, as someone who's a cloud engineer, I always find myself advocating for the software developers that I work with to make their jobs easier, to make their deployments easier, to be able to deploy their infrastructure and work with them closely. I wanted to put myself in the shoes of a developer and kind to be empathetic to their needs. I've written some scripts, I've written some small Python programs before, but I've never built a full stack app. And that was the motivation for this. So I just went ahead, forked up the money and bought the year license and started moving forward with them. What that brought me up to was, if I actually go over to here, is you can see this is a very, very large, there's 353 videos. And if anybody's seen anything on their YouTube, their big thing is about building projects. And if I were to recommend anybody to join a bootcamp that just wants to learn how to code and just getting started, I recommend checking out Coder Foundry because as someone who works in the software development industry and I work at Software Engineers, the capstone projects of this bootcamp are the real deal and they're the real shit. So if you want to build a real project and get a job immediately, I would probably say go to Coder Foundry. Now, with that being said, I'm not trying to be a software engineer. I, I love cloud engineering. I love Kubernetes. I love containers. I love cloud native. However, the more I get deep into my field, Software engineering practices started to help me out a lot. And one of those is understanding the software development life cycle. That is branching strategies, managing infrastructure as code. And I started having to build my own tooling for cloud engineering, gluing services together. And what really helped me maintain my products was software engineering practices. So I've learned how to write Python throughout the years very well object oriented, functional programming, logging, how to organize code. And I feel like I've built definitely some chops to the point where I can hold conversations with engineers on what applications are doing, what we need to do and be able to make some recommendations and things like that. And that has proven to be true because I've made some great decisions in this time as a cloud engineer helping um, software engineers. But I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole anymore because I want to talk about what this bootcamp did for me and why it made me change the route, which I want to think I want to take my career as well as where I'm focusing. One of the big things was, is you build a portfolio. And I built this portfolio uh, based on Bootstrap, um, some HTML, CSS. Now I've messed with that stuff before. I've built a few landing pages just because I was curious. But if you're anyone like me, I can't even draw a stick figure right. I, I can't even read my own handwriting. So learning about Bootstrap and how to build websites with that, I found a theme, tweaked it and used it. And it looks like I built a professional website. So to me, this is my cup of tea. So you could just see it's my portfolio website. You know, there's some things in here. And then here's the placeholders for the projects that are, I was supposed to be going through for the uh, bootcamp. And then we get into these coding challenges. And this is where things started to change. Let's look at this one. This is zero to 100 full throttle. And what it is, is a, it is a project to demonstrate data structures and algorithms. And I appreciate that they go with this route with the bootcamp and being able to have a tangible project rather than whiteboard, I think is a lot more beneficial. However, I'm not a novice. I know IT, I've been in the industry. I was like, I wanna make this something that's gonna benefit me. And one of those things is I've always been in love with serverless. I've used Lambda and step functions and S3 and DynamoDB and all these things. And I've always felt that they were lacking to be full scale apps just because it's, it's serverless. There's a lot of tweaks around it. And then I started deploying this stuff and getting into new frameworks and the tools and things that are going on with serverless. And I was hooked. So I'm starting to really drink this Kool-Aid. And my plan is, as you can see with this app here, is this is 100% serverless. This is built on top of S3. This is built on top of CloudFront. This uses the API gateway in a synchronous way to get the response and send it back to our app rather than doing it in the browser in the DOM of JavaScript. So just a quick demo, you can see here, I need to print out the numbers from zero to 100. If I display them, boom. Now this is all done with Lambda. In Coder Foundry, they have you do this in JavaScript, which is cool now, but I like to do things differently and we're gonna keep going down that route. So you can just see, here's just a simple code and I'm sending response body back. Once I got into 
hey, I put this in CI CD to deploy it. I started learning about how the AWS CDK is really benefiting the serverless crowd with code build. And needless to say, my mind was blown. As someone who is skeptical of building serverless applications for the needed complexity, I shunned it and I said, there's no reason, just put it in two containers. Well, if you're anybody like me, you've been in the industry for five, six years, containers were probably around for like seven or eight, really gaining forward. And people said, hey, no one's gonna use Kubernetes. It's too complex, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Even small startups use Kubernetes now because of the ecosystem. I decided moving forward that I need to humble myself. And by that, what I'm gonna do is continue this learn.coder foundry bootcamp, but I'm gonna build everything serverless with the caveat of I'm not gonna do C sharp ASP.net. That's what they wanna do here when you start getting into more of the full stack apps. Like if you look down here, like building a palindrome, C sharp. The company I work for now is a C sharp stack. However, I don't need to know C sharp, but if, since I want to learn serverless, the serverless languages that are really pushing full stack web development are the JavaScript ecosystem. Node.js, Vue, React, Nuxt, server-side rendering seems to be the big trend coming back. Even though C-sharp is server-side rendering, C-sharp runs very slow in Lambda, so that's a no-go for me. So what I'm gonna do is start to retool myself into a, a dangerous full stack JavaScript developer, so that way I can build these projects, but also be able to do more of the advanced things to advocate for my developers and my infrastructure where I'm at now, and potentially move forward in my career as serverless becomes the norm, which is going to. I strongly believe serverless is gonna become the norm because it's only getting better and better each day, and it's a new way to work. I wanna be able to make these features and demo these features for people, for YouTube, for myself, and just as well as learn something new. Because if we're being honest, I'm getting burned out of Kubernetes. I've been working with Kubernetes for three years. It's everything that's in my mind. That's all I think about is, oh, there's Argo CD. There's, you have to have all these things to deploy an app. You have to have a service mesh. You have to have SSL termination from the service mesh. You have to have a key value store. You have to have these securities. You need 20 services to support two containers, two apps. It's insane, the overhead. And I have to keep track of all this stuff and I'm tired of working with Kubernetes in my free time and in my day job. I love Kubernetes. It's my favorite thing in the world right now. What well, was my favorite thing in the world right now until I started deep in, getting deep into serverless. So I wanna take a change of pace. How are we gonna move forward from here? So I'm gonna do Kuberne um, Kubernetes, but Coder Foundry with a different tech stack. And what I mean by that is, here, you can see my video notes here, it don't matter. So I started this thing called, I wanted to do 100 days of serverless. And then I realized, hey, I have some prerequisites that I need to meet. Uh, so I kind of just jotted down some ideas, where my thought process is at and where I'm at. And what we can see here, this is what prompted me to hate serverless two years ago. They said, this is a typical serverless architecture. And then I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's very complex, over, overly complex. Who would want to do this? And then I took a step back and decided to humble myself and really piece this together. There's not one server running this application. There's no managing servers. It's just code. It's infrastructure is code and it's code is code. And I realized that Kubernetes changed the way that we deploy infrastructure. And then serverless is going to change the way we deploy infrastructure. And why I was hating on serverless was because it wasn't what I was used to. And I think it's very misunderstood. And I decided, hey, moving forward, I was gonna do something like 100 days of Kubernetes like Aeneas Ulrich has done on YouTube, but I wanna do something similar. And then I realized, well, shit, I need to get my programming chops up. So I decided to do that. And what I've been doing, it says, I need to figure out what my tech stack's gonna be. I decided I'm gonna have a JavaScript view, TypeScript, bootstrap front end because of the server-side rendering trend working with serverless and the industry. I'd like to use Nuxt. And why view and Nuxt? Because they're not as complex as React. And it's something I can get up running, making simple, you know, apps and enough JavaScript to be dangerous to get things to work. Enough, enough duct tape to make them work, to be honest. And make them look somewhat half decent with Bootstrap. That's my back end, that's my front end. And then obviously my data is gonna be the serverless things that I know. S3, DynamoDB, CloudFront, Aurora DB. What tools am I gonna use? And this is kind of where I was like, whoa. What was holding serverless back for a long time is the developer experience. There wasn't, there was a thing called serverless. You had to write YAML. Um, it could have been a little bit of clunky 
because cloud formation can be a pain in the butt. And then the CDK came out and AWS SAM and code build and code pipeline have all kind of started making this ecosystem where you can have these self mutating pipelines at AWS CDK, AWS SAM to test locally. And then you have AWS SAM Accelerate where you can test locally and integrate directly into AWS. And I said, holy smokes, this is all changing. The developer experience is changing. Let's let's move forward with this. I, I want to get into this. I want to be able to tell people like, dude, let's make this part of our app serverless. We got this and going on. We don't have to worry about it. And when it comes down to it, people are going to want to see a demo and they'll want to see a POC. I'm putting all my chips in on the serverless stack going forward. And that's kind of where I want to see the industry go. And it's going to keep going there. With all that being said, I had to put together my curriculum. My curriculum is uh, JavaScript Vue.js. I'm a big fan of Brad Traversy just because, you know, he's a legend legend in the YouTube arena when it comes to programming. And I kind of always had a little thing for web development in my head. Like I was always interested. There's always cool things going on. There's a million things. I thought it's a good place to start. And I've mostly done his JavaScript course. I'm almost done with that. And then I'm going to move into Vue 3 from NetNinja and then just brush up on some uh, TypeScript. Node.js and some Nux. So it's probably going to keep me busy for the next month. And I plan on vlogging about it and my process and the projects I'm making and talking about it. And then I'm going to move into what I want to call 100 days or maybe 365 days of serverless. Yeah, that's really it. That's where I want to go. And that's what I want to do with all this stuff. So with all that being said, you've seen it all. You've seen my curriculum. You've seen where I'm at now. And that's all I really got to say. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you don't like mind these talking head type things. Um, I don't want to put too much production effort into these videos because I want to spend my time learning and building projects. So I got some inspiration from other YouTube channels. So that way I want to bring you along with the journey with me as I'm learning and I can teach you things along the way. So if you're hoping to stick around for that, uh, the full tutorial type videos are going to be on hold for a bit, but you know, stay tuned enjoy this process with me and let's work through this together because um, I'd like to learn from others and I want to teach you guys, you know, everything's a learning process. So as a soft, as a cloud engineer, I'm always learning. And if you've been in the industry about five years now, you can start seeing that programming knowledge and understanding software development and even being able to write some software is starting to be part of the job. It's not required, but it's starting to get there and I can see it moving forward. So. I want to be able to build full stack serverless apps and that's what I'm going to do. So thank you for watching. If you made it this far and enjoyed my ramblings, uh, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. So that way I want to bring you along with the journey with me as I'm learning and I can teach you things along the way. So if you're hoping to stick around for that, uh, the full tutorial type videos are going to be on hold for a bit, but you know, stay tuned enjoy this process with me and let's work through this together because um, I'd like to learn from others and I want to teach you guys, you know, everything's a learning process. So as a soft, as a cloud engineer, I'm always learning. And if you've been in the industry about five years now, you can start seeing that programming knowledge and understanding software development and even being able to write some software is starting to be part of the job. It's not required but it's starting to get there and I can see it moving forward. I want to be able to build full stack serverless apps and that's what I'm going to do. So thank you for watching. If you made it this far and enjoyed my ramblings, uh, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.